um, I can imagine that some people will trickle in, so I will start slowly with a bit of an introduction. My name is Sandra Fauconnier, and um, one of the hats I have on is I work uh, part-time as a product strategist for Wikimedia Sweden um, on a project, uh, which I will explain <laughs> in, a, in, in a bit more length in a few minutes, um, uh, in a project for, uh, that is related to the Wikimedia movement strategy, uh, in which Wikimedia Sweden experiments to start uh, building up uh, a thematic hub for support of content partnerships in the Wikimedia movement. And my side of the work is looking at how we can improve the situation of software in that area, software which is often written and made by volunteers, and uh, how we can support this better and make sure that the software becomes more sustainable. And that is also the topic of this session. Um, just for, um, and I welcome everyone who is joining now. Welcome, welcome, join us. Um, just for housekeeping reasons, um, I am going to put in the chat here in Zoom the link to our Etherpad. Um, the Etherpad is really central to this session in the sense that I really hope that as a group here, um, we will have a lively conversation with each other and also shy people are, you know, uh, triggered to put their opinion in there. And so I would really like to use the Etherpad for group discussion at a bit of typing of, of ideas and then we can have a discussion afterwards. Um, I will actually start sharing my screen for a short introduction while everyone joins. And I really welcome everyone who is joining here. Um, hi, everyone. Um, let me see for sharing my screen. Please bear with me. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to shuffle around that I still see your face because I like to have that to feel, to have a bit of a group feeling. <laughs> uh, yes, that's better. All right. So for all the people who just arrived, I'm not sure if you see the previous chats, um, messages here on Zoom. Um, we have an Etherpad, um, and I would like all of us to use this Etherpad for active discussion. In the Etherpad, you also see some information about the program, about what we will do together here the next um, 30 minutes. And um, so I, in the Etherpad, you will see a short uh, like overview of what the session will be about. Um, I will introduce this session while people trickle in with some context about why we are having this conversation. And then we will have a bit of a group discussion inside the Etherpad and also with invited people here in, 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 the, in, in the group. Uh, hi, Navino, <laughs> welcome, uh, welcome here and good to see you as well. And um, yeah, uh, as I, I want to emphasize that this conversation is only the start of a, a much longer process. So I'm aware that not everyone who should be in this conversation can be here. So we would really like to follow up. I would actually like to encourage everyone who is interested in this conversation, who is here and thinks like, oh, I'm really interested in this conversation. I want to stay in touch. Please, um, the first thing you can do in the Etherpad is type your name here. Um, if you're comfortable doing that, of course. So let's say I haven't, I am just a participant. I'm typing my name here. Uh, and if you want, you can also add your email address. And if you are affiliated with a piece of software or if you are working on a specific project that is relevant, then you can also enter the name of that project. Um, so, that's a way we can start together. Just type your name here. Of course, I'm already listed. Um, if you are un uncomfortable leaving your email address, you can after the session also email me and just get in touch with me in private. And then I will also have your contact information. I will now jump to a few short slides just to give some introduction and to warm up the group while people are coming in. Um, uh, in this session, I am, uh, as I said a few minutes earlier, I am representing Wikimedia Sweden. Um, Wikimedia Sweden is at this moment um, experimenting with uh, how, what can a content partnership hub in the Wikimedia movement look like. And I am here with a specific hat on looking at how, we, how can we support software for content partnerships better. Um, I have a few slides with, with some context. So some years ago, and I know that some people in this group have been really 
a big part of these conversations or have at least followed them along. Uh, we've been having conversations as the Wikimedia movement about where do we want to be in 2030? Uh, what is, you know, where what are we striving for as a Wikimedia movement? And um, various, uh, lots of recommendations and lots of ideas came out of those conversations are a movement strategy for 2030. And one of the recommendations has been that we will um, ensure equity in decision making, that we will make our decision making about the crucial things we want to do more equitable, that we will um, also establish a global council. Uh, that's one of the things that is going on, but also start thinking about a more decentralized way of organizing our movements, for instance, with also besides the organizations that we already have with the chapters, uh, the affiliates, also the establishment of regional and thematic hubs. And one of the themes that I am very passionate about personally, that's why I'm here, that's why I'm working with Wikimedia Sweden, is Wikimedia content partnerships. Glam Wiki partnerships, but much broader than that, Wikimedians collaborating with organizations around the world. And how can we make that work more effective, more sustainable? How can we help people do their work better? And um, yeah, that's why I'm here. And I think that's why you all are also here because you are interested in that topic. Wikimedia Sweden is actually stepping forward to experiment with doing a thematic hub in this area. Um, and there are uh, really some core values that we want to emphasize that uh, it is an experiment what we are doing here. Um, we are really open to, and it's really important for us to answer to the needs of the Wikimedia movement um, to help others, not replace the work that others are doing, because we know that people in the Wikimedia movement are already doing a lot of content partnerships. It's more looking at what is missing, where can we help make, make, do people do their jobs better and not step into on, to, on people's feet, but really help people where there are gaps. And um, so support can be in many different areas. This session focuses on one specific one, which is the technical area, software. Um, so various things are going on in the hub and at Wikimedia, there are other sessions also about some other aspects of that work. But in this session, we are focusing on software, software development. Um, what does that mean, software? It's, that's, I, all of this has been a little bit fake. Um, for me, software for Wikimedia content partnerships, to make it a bit more concrete, that's things like, you know, patty pen. Um, that is things like uh, software that we use for batch uploading data to Wikidata, batch uploading images to Wikimedia Commons, to tr keep track of statistics of the impact of our work in this area, um, visualizing things and all the infrastructure around it. How can we make that software better? Um, we know of cases, you know, where the software, uh, it is, this kind of software is very often developed by volunteer developers, which is amazing, passionate people uh, developing really crucial things. And we actually want to make sure that volunteer developers can and are, you know, encouraged to continue doing this because there's a lot of, uh, yeah, like innovation going on in that area. But how can we make this software also sustainable over the long term? How can we make sure that software stays maintained, that people can keep using it if they find it important, if it's valuable for them? Um, and that has various questions. And in this session, in this discussion, we will only touch upon it very, very superficially. And our intention is really to continue talking about this over time. And this is only a starting point, but um, what can a thematic hub do in this area? What should a thematic hub do and not do? Um, and <laughs> we will talk about it already a bit in, in a few minutes. How can we organize this? Who helps to decide, uh, make decisions like which software do we really want to support to, for, for the future? Do we need new things? Uh, which software do we also want to sunset? Things like that. How, how do we decide? Um, what do vol volunteer developers themselves want? And also who pays for things if there's money involved? How does the money flow in? Who is being paid? Who is not being paid? How do we organize all of this? We are really at the beginning and uh, as a movement, let's talk about this. And that's why we are here together. Um, and I just want to flag, I saw that jean Fred is in the room. Hi jean Fred. Uh, we already have some people who are thinking about this area and that is something I want to encourage further. Um, we have uh, this wonderful blog post by Jean-Frédéric Berthelot, who has already been thinking about it from his perspective as a volunteer developer contributing to things. And um, 
we actually want to encourage more ideas like that and more conversations about all the ideas that are floating. Um, cool. Uh, let's actually jump to a brainstorm. Um, I want to stop talking myself and I want to give the floor to you, to everyone invited in this, in this group, everyone present here. Um, let us go back to the etherpad. And in the etherpad, I have actually put some questions um, and I thank those who are taking notes. That's awesome. Um, so we have, I will also switch to the slides. Um, I hope um, that the slides will help uh, a little bit. Um, so listening to my introduction, like, okay, with the Wikimedia 2020 strategic direction, we want to establish thematic hubs that support certain uh, aspects of our work in the Wikimedia in the Wikimedia movement. If you, yes, I will do that. Uh, thank you, Hoge. I probably mispronouncing your name, but uh, I appreciate the ping. Yes. Um, if we if we think about a situation where uh, the essential software that we use for content partnerships, batch upload software, um, software for uh, statistics, software for reconciliation, all sorts of things that people want to do for partnerships. Um, what are the essential things? What is the one essential thing that an organization helping it, like Wikimedia Sweden or another thematic hub, can do, should do, and what should they absolutely not do? I invite everyone to think about that for a few seconds and just type your ideas in here. So I see that someone is already doing. Uh, a few people are already typing, and I will give the group the opportunity to do that for a few minutes. I will keep an eye on the etherpad, what people are typing, and uh, if I see that our IDs are falling a little bit silent, then I will actually come back and we can discuss it as a group. If there are things in, that other people are saying that you totally agree with, you can just say plus one. So I will do that here as well. Um, I totally agree with keep engaging, growing the community, I plus one that. That also gives us a way to see, oh, this, these are the ideas that people like a lot. And I see that people are already typing and let's do that together for a few minutes. I forgot to think about the waiting music. Oh, well, <laughs> I will not sing because that's terrible. But uh, just imagine that there is a, the music that you like inspiring you to type here. If people are a little bit blocked in thinking about this, I also have put some more specific questions below. If you like, you can have a quick read of those questions and see if they inspire you for more specific answers as well. There's still a lot of activity here, which is great. I see that most people have very positive ideas, which is good. But also, let me remind you, if you think about things that 
Um, a thematic hub should definitely not do when they support content partnership software. Please also put them there. Let's also be negative. That's uh, it's really good uh, for everyone to know what are definitely definite don'ts. I am also seeing that some people are putting plus ones behind IDs, which is great. That helps us uh, to see which which things are most important to this group here. So please do that as well. I think we will um, go on a few more minutes until I see that the typing stops a little bit and then we will regroup and talk together. I see things that I find really interesting. This is great. Also ideas that I didn't have before. <laughs> it's really nice. I'm sure maybe some people have arrived quite late, so I will post the link to the Etherpad again. <laughs> oh, people are even adding answers to the specific questions. Wow, ex excellent. <laughs> You're awesome. You're fantastic, all of you. Thank you. This is cool. Thank you for thank you very much. Uh, I see that people are still typing. I would say also in the interest of time, we now have 13 minutes left for this session. Um, let's continue typing for three minutes. For people who will watch this <laughs> recording afterwards, it will be like, people are typing in an etherpad. Oh, interesting. Um, let's type for three minutes more. And then I suggest we kind of finish the typing session and we go back to a group discussion. And in that group discussion, um, there are some people in this uh, session who I explicit, explicitly invited to be part of the conversation. Um, we have Revital from Wikimedia Israel. Wikimedia Israel works on um, the Glam Wiki dashboard, which is a tool for statistics for Glam collaborations. We have Navino Evans and we have Eugene Egbe, who have been working uh, on a very nice tool called the ISA tool for tagging images on Wikimedia Commons. Let me see, we have Jean-Frédéric Jean Berthelot, who um, is a very you know, active thinker in this area, also a volunteer developer who helps us think through things and has blogged about this topic. Um, and I would like especially to ask these people to also maybe give some comments on what has been said here. But I also want to say, um, yeah, Everyone who wants to comment upon, upon something, feel free to unmute yourself and speak up. And um, if you have a question or a, so a comment you want to make, let's use also the raise hands feature of uh, Zoom so that I am aware and the other people in the room here are also aware that uh, people want to speak up. Don't be shy. Um, feel free to speak up, everyone. Um, in the meanwhile, I see, a, oh, I already see two questions in the chat. How many paid developers are currently working at the tools you collected in the tool hub list or in general at Wikimedia project related tools? <laughs> that is a really excellent question. And I actually do not know. And that is probably something we should be counting as well. I think looking at the list um, and just eyeballing it very quickly, I do think if you would count all the paid developers for all these projects, and some I don't know, maybe POS is also some paid people. I have no idea, actually, I don't know it. Um, maybe three, four 
uh, FTEs totally, most of them are really volunteer tools um, or have been built just through a grant for a few months on a paid basis. And then afterwards, um, yeah, there has been no payment anymore. And there has been some low maintenance of the tools. Um, Patty Penis in that situation, it has been built by a paid grant, but then no more paid support. Um, some of these are uh, really, really hardcore volunteer tools, so no one is working on them on a paid basis, like all the Magnus tools, etc. Um, but that's an excellent question, and I think it's a really good one. Um, when I continue building these tool lists to make sure that everyone is clear about it, it's not a final list. I think that's one of the things to keep track of, like, is are there people being paid or have people been paid to do these things or are they purely volunteer based? And I see that there is a question from Butch who put up his hand in the chat. Butch, if you want to um, speak up and ask your question, feel free to do so. Hello. Uh, hi. Uh, hi, I'm just, uh, uh, just sharing uh, uh, my experience before because uh, during the movement strategy uh, recommendations process, uh, during our meeting in Bangkok, I believe it was uh, 2019, uh, we, we are asked about how do we do with partnerships. And one Wikimedian told us, why don't we have a, a central location wherein uh, people can, uh, can suggest ideas and uh, or probably uh, uh, post something there that uh, they're looking for a, a resource uh, tool or, or person who could uh, help them with their uh, particular uh, need. For instance, they need, they need to automate uh, statistical data, uh, probably, and uh, rather than relying on meta, which is a jungle, probably we should have a, a, some sort of some automation like a, a marketplace, like uh, an Amazon sort of uh, of uh, or or an Alibaba some sort of a uh, a place wherein uh, uh, people can uh, just uh, using their their phones or their computers just uh, just use it and someone will reply uh, with that matches on their needs. That, that I'm hoping that there will be some some party or or group who will develop this uh, web interface. Mm. And you are specifically talking about something online. A place online like a forum where uh that feels yeah. a bit like a marketplace that's where people ask questions and get get help doing the yes. things you want to do yes yes some, yeah. some sort of like that or yeah. or a combination of both wherein uh there is someone who is offering help like uh, i'm offering my my uh saturday time to teach you about uh, quick statements then mm -hmm. uh, and then people will sign in with with that with that tool Yes. I'm actually going to type your suggestion. I have the impression that that is this suggestion here that we have in the Etherpad, right? Uh, a marketplace where people post requests and offer capacity building. And I will add your comments there. Also a tool where people can offer uh, their knowledge, help, etc. I want to add to that that uh, Wikimedia Sweden is already also thinking in that direction. Uh, they are building um, um, a help desk for content partnerships. It's I'm not sure if there's already ideas on doing that online in some sort of forum or marketplace setting, but uh, it is definitely good to keep track of that and see if that fills your needs. And if you have ideas about that, I, I, I'm very, very certain that Wikimedia Sweden, the people who, who are working on uh, the help desk will be super happy to hear your feedback and comments. Um, thanks for that. Uh, thank you for uh, adding that comment. And it is actually also uh, an addition to one of the suggestions here. When I look at, um, for our last six minutes, at the various things that have been suggested, let me look at the ones that are plus, plus ones a lot. Um, we see keep engaging and growing the community. Um, does someone want to answer to that? Or did someone suggest that specific one? Or do they feel very strongly and want to say a few words about that? I think um, also, what are you specifically meaning by community? Is that specifically the developer community helping to, 
the helping that community to stay lively um, or is it more broad like the community of users if no one speaks up <laughs> that's also totally fine but i just wanted to draw attention to uh, the fact that that is highlighted um, Another highlight that I see, and I actually see it. Oh, there's Eugene who raised his hand. Uh, Eugene, go ahead. All right. I just wanted to share more light on engaging the, the growing communities. Yes. Uh, particularly uh, uh, from Africa, I, I think that more, more and more responsibility is given to African developers. I think that if there is, a, there is a lot of work done around GLAM in Africa, then the developers in those communities should be engaged more because I think most of the tools we use are not specific to the realities that we, we, we face in Africa. So if mm. we can concentrate this uh, energy around the, the specificities or the realities in Africa to build tools that are specific to uh, these uh, partners or these uh, organizations implementing these uh, GLAMs, then it would be really good. Excellent. I am just quickly making a note of your comments here. Um, so I, I hear you say that you would like both, I think, um, engagement for the community, help for growing the community for the GLAM partnerships themselves, but also for the developers working on it. Am I correct in hearing that? Or Sure, yeah. sure. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, I will leave it to others to <laughs> respond because I'm also moderating here. Um, another... Uh, Thing that I see coming back, and I totally agree with that. I, I want to cluster a little bit. I see here that we want better documentation, uh, learning resources, master classes, train the trainer certificates. I totally agree with that. I know myself that uh, someone already said here, like the mess that is meta. <laughs> um, I think one of the recommendations, or at least we've we've talked a lot about in the in the movement strategy about better documentation in general for the movement, and maybe more centralized, maybe uh, documentation that is uh, easier to find, easier to translate, and that is definitely something I can imagine that a hub like this would play a role in. Um, I see a hand from Alicia. Alicia, go ahead, take the uh, floor. Yeah, thank you. Uh, a lot of the work that I do at uh, Wikimedia Sphere is working with GLAMs who want to have content partnerships uh, with the Wikimedia movement. And we are really seeing this shift in that uh, GLAMs don't just want to get their stuff uploaded to Commons and so on, but they actually want to develop in-house expertise and they want to develop their own long-term strategies uh, and continue contributing to the platforms on their own. And this has really been quite a big threshold with uh, working with GLAMS, like explaining here are all the different tools, here are mm. all the different user scripts, here is Meta, here are people discuss, and here are all the different pages that you have to read up on. And here's all the pages with documentation that a lot of people have developed uh, in parallel or not at all. And I often get the impression that glam people expect a, a nicer package to learn from because they, they want to invest their time into it. I am... I, I recognize that very much. I see in the group that we also have Michelle from Wikimedia Netherlands and Wikimedia Netherlands, for instance, is also working on documentation specifically for GLAMS. So I made a note of that. Uh, if people want to add things there, um, then please do. Um, we are almost running out of time, but the Etherpad, I think, is a fantastic resource that we can come back to later. I just want to quickly say we will follow up on this. So uh, as I said in the beginning, if you want to stay in touch, please leave your email address or email me because this is just the start. This Etherpad is, is gold and we will follow up on it. Um, I want to focus on getting the most out of this group. So I see that uh, Navino has raised the hand and I want to give you the floor, Nav. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's just a quick thing really, just to say like, what, from my perspective, the major, major thing uh, that is a bit problematic is this idea that it's really, really fun to develop the tools in the first place. And 
uh, you know, volunteers love to do that and they maybe like to add a new cool feature and make it do something really fancy. But then the really boring bit comes afterwards, which is like maintaining it, coming to fix it when there's a problem in the future. Maybe some stuff changes technically and you have to go and update the security. And all of this stuff is, is, is just not, there's not time to do it and there's not the energy to do it. And even Magnus, you know, like, you know, he responds to what he can, but he has this huge list of outstanding requests for really important features for different people. And he doesn't have the time to do it. And if he does have time, he wants to do something that's fun for him, obviously. Uh, so for me, it feels like particularly supporting, obviously, Magnus, but anyone who's who develops these tools and really highlighting the most important tools and the ones that are really used by everyone and the things that everyone really wants them to have and to just come on board and support them with some ongoing sort of uh, uh, paid work, you know, like the you know, quick statements and these really essential tools that so many people use. So I feel like that's the major thing that's maybe maybe missing and would be really nice uh, to see more of um, yeah mm. so. yeah uh, absolutely i mean we have seen this quite recently with patty pan developed by volunteers volunteers have their own lives they have their own priorities and when it stopped working it turned out that a lot of glams depended on it to do their uploads and like fortunately we were able to have one of our colleagues to help out and uh, bring it back up but that really made it very very clear that this is a weakness in the tools ecosystem yeah thanks for that and i am actually also curious to hear what volunteer developers more volunteer developers find about that i I've often heard Magnus himself say, I love creating tools from scratch and thinking, you know, like uh, inventing new tools. And then I'm totally fine with others picking it up. Um, he does not want to be paid himself at all, not because he hates being paid, but just because he has a different job in his life. Um, I, I actually want to hear more in the future about other volunteer developers as well. Like, what do you find acceptable and not where, at what point when a tool is seen as really important, uh, what form of collaboration do you appreciate? How do you feel about being paid or not? Um, because that's also a sensitive thing in our movement, like some people uh, do things for pay. And that's, in my personal opinion, totally fine. Some of our best tools have been created also uh, in a paid position. Um, I think that's also, for me, part of the conversations we need to have uh, after this. I don't hear anyone from uh, the organization telling us that we need to stop. So I'm just continuing here until someone says you need to stop this session. <laughs> if people want to go, of course, feel free to go. But I quickly just want to go to some other comments that have gotten pluses. Um, we do not want uh, to depend on Magnus Manske's free time to fix problems. No, that's correct. Um, yeah. I, he's Magnus is fantastic and he is extremely helpful and he has been really crucial to the Wikimedia movement and um, yeah uh, let him do whatever he likes to do and uh, let other people help to do whatever he does not like to do and same goes for other volunteer developers um, let me see do we have a really good thing to finish this session I have absolutely not been able to read all the input here so if someone has a last comment here, I would um, encourage you to say so. Um, maybe one thing I am now on the on the spot thinking about. Um, we of course have also have a very mixed situation. We have tools like the ones created by uh, by Magnus Manske himself that have been totally volunteer driven. But then we also have tools like the one that Wikimedia Israel is working on that is basically supported by an affiliate. A Wikimedia affiliate is building it or several affiliates are building it and are maintaining it. It is in a paid position um, done by paid developers. And also there, Wikimedia Sweden does not want to get in the way. It is great that, you know, also affiliates, organizations take initiative in doing things. And I think it's really good that we find also a way where we stay in touch very well about these things and we help each other. But uh, if affiliates, if groups are really willing to do things, then they should be able to do that. Um, and we should support each other and find a way to do that as well. Um, I see the message that we need to wrap up. I, there was a last hand from 
I think Alicia again, if you still have your yeah, famous yeah. last words. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the tasks that would be good to be taken over by a formal organization such yeah. as us. And I see documentation, documentation, long-term maintenance and prioritizing what should be developed. These are the things that are not as glamorous to do if you are a developer and you like developing cool tools. But then to actually write good documentation that requires a different set of skills to make it all cohesive and, and available to different target groups. So that is a very good point that uh, I will be taking away from this. Totally. Thank you. Oh, last hand from Eugene, or was that still your old hand up in the air? Sorry, so we're we going really to have to finish. Oh, I'm yes, sorry. Yes, for the next session. Thank you, everyone. But let's be in touch. Um, please leave your contact info and uh, we will talk about this more. Thank you very much, organizers, uh, technical team. Thank you.